Hello again, guys, and welcome to this week's Online Life Group. This week, we're talking about putting our faith into action. And I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of opportunities to do just that over the past few weeks. All right, now's the time to pause the video, make a last-minute dash to the fridge, and settle in for a little Christian interaction. James 2.14 reads, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? This verse can be confusing. Is James really saying that we have to work to be saved? No. Paul answers this plainly in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, where he writes, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So James isn't saying that our works save us. He's saying that the kind of faith that saves us works. Let me give you an example. Have you ever heard of Charles Blondin? He was a tightrope walker that had faith that he could walk a tightrope across Niagara Falls. So in September of 1860, he did just that. Over the years, Blondin made the trip across the tightrope over 300 times, and each time he tried to up the ante. Once he sat down halfway across and had a glass of wine. On another trip, he stopped halfway and somehow managed to cook and eat an omelet. On one trip, he carried a man on his back, and on another trip, he carried two. But one day, after walking across the tightrope backwards, he grabbed a wheelbarrow and pushed it back across to the other side. Then he asked for a show of hands. Who here believes I can safely push this wheelbarrow back across, he asked. Everyone's hand shot up. So Blondin pointed to a man with his hand raised and said, get in. The man put his hand back down and disappeared into the crowd. You see, James 2.14 is really just a reminder that real faith, the kind of faith that saves, gets in the wheelbarrow. All right, question one. What wheelbarrow is God asking you to get into? Um... So the wheelbarrow that I'm in now, I mean, you guys are, I guess, hearing this first now, but um, God put it on my heart a couple weeks ago for me to write a book. And, uh, and so I did. I've, I've written this uh, ebook. It's, um, well, it's actually kind of growing at the moment, but uh, it's, a, it's around 55 pages. I think it's probably going to be about 60 when I'm done. Getting in that wheelbarrow was hard um, because writing a book is such a big undertaking. And and it's you know trying to keep your thoughts all together and then but then there's there's another wheelbarrow that you have to get into afterwards and and that's the one that i'm in right this second and that's that's where you start reaching out to people and 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 you just have to be transparent and you just have to say hey i mean in fact you actually have to ask them to to be hard on it to be a critic and uh you know after spending all that time with it it feels a little like your baby and and yet you have to ask people to tell you how ugly your baby is if if you want it to be the best so so that's the wheelbarrow i'm in now but but the wheelbarrow i have to get into next the one he's asking me to get into is the next step is for me to actually promote this and give this away and you know find ways to to through facebook and other things to like give this out and and, and guys that's it's really kind of uh I don't know there's a naked feeling about it right i mean you you have to if this thing is going to be any good at all then it had to just not try to hide anything it had to be totally transparent and it had to just tell the the, the truth as i saw it and so you know that's unnerving because it's not a question of if i mean there will be people who don't like it there will be people who say you know you said this wrong or you misunderstand this and uh, but maybe that's the thing with wheelbarrows, right? Because if we think about our God, let's, let's go back to the guy who refused to get in the wheelbarrow and, and go with him. What if he'd gotten in, right? What if he'd had enough faith to trust that Charles Bonnet could get him across the rope? He would still be scared, right? God's had me get into enough wheelbarrows that I know, hey, look, I trust him. He's going to get me to the other side. That doesn't mean the journey's going to be stress-free. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're not going to have a little bit of fear or uncertainty along the way. Sure, you trust them. You wouldn't have gotten in the wheelbarrow otherwise. But, you know, sometimes you still have to struggle a little bit. So, yeah, that's how I'd answer that one. Question two. Pastor tells us that true faith is not just sympathetic, it's empathetic. What's the difference? How does empathy help us put faith in action? 
Um, sympathy and empathy. So the way I would define this, sympathy um, recognizes the situation, um, but empathy feels it, right? So, so I can sympathize with the person who's, let's say, hungry, thirsty, cold, uh, but empathy, I let myself feel that person's pain. And in a way, that's kind of all the difference in the world because we're, we're very in tune to easing our own pain. Um, in, in, in James chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, he talks about this. He says, um, he says what good does it do if you meet somebody and you, you see that they're hungry and they don't have enough uh, clothes to keep them warm, and all you do is just walk away and say, hey, good luck, pal stay warm and eat well. It's like, what, what, what good does that do? Uh, is, in terms of the poor fellow you've met, obviously it does absolutely nothing. But, but, but what he's getting at is that um, you show your faith by that. Because if we trust in a God that provides, if we trust that God provides through us, through others, we start to naturally want to be that agent for God as well. We, we, we naturally start to see the things that we encounter in our life, like the suffering of others, as an assignment from God. And we can't just walk away from a person and say, you know, hey, good luck, bud. Now, let's be honest. Does anyone do this perfectly? Do, do, do we have empathy for every single human being that we see? No, no, we probably don't. We probably don't. The, the truth is, is that we, we probably don't have enough gas in the tank, so to speak, to, to be empathetic and to jump in and try to change the situation for every single person that we meet. And, and, and I, don't think, I don't think that that's what James is saying. I don't think that he means that we have to, to you know, give away our entire life to empathy. But I think that, that if we're not feeling, if we're, if we're not crossing from sympathy to empathy, at least sometimes, um, that's a problem. And I think that we should expect that as our faith grows and as we know God better, that we should go from sympathy to empathy even more often. All right, question three. What's the difference between belief and faith? Uh, belief and faith. Um, yeah, I love I love that. I I I I would almost say I struggled with that concept. Uh, maybe about six months ago, um, I was reading through um, several books on the gospel. In fact, I bought like eight, and and I just read everything I could, everything I could get my hands on about that. And and a lot of it was dealing with this. And you know, this is often something. Uh, that we have Christians have said and, and, and we've heard throughout our lives where it's like, just believe, right? If you'll just believe, you'll be saved. But is simple belief enough? Uh, James brings it up, right? He's like, hey, you say you believe there's one God. Great, the demons believe the same thing. Okay, wow, that's kind of, that calls it into question, doesn't it? Because of course the demons believe. Uh, so is belief enough? Well, first off, what's the difference? I would define the difference as this. I would say um, believing uh, a thing is like uh, head knowledge, whereas faith is actually willing to risk something. Let's make it more tangible. Let's say, uh, let's take an airplane. Uh, belief understands that planes can fly. Faith actually buys a ticket, gets on, sits down, and, and goes. But, uh, and if we wanted to see, if we wanted to see this biblically, What's the difference? What, what does this look like? Well, for that, I think we would look to Abraham, right? Abraham believed that God had said to him, follow me, leave your home, follow me to this land that I will show you. And so what did Abraham do? Well, he proved he had faith because he actually packed up all the stuff and he followed him uh, to where he led him. And then later he believed that God had said, um, I need you to be circumcised as part of the covenant. This was probably no small thing, but he proved he had faith because he actually stepped in there and did it. Same thing when he's asked to, uh, to make the sacrifice, right? He proves he believed that God had asked him to sacrifice Isaac. And he proved it by actually putting it on. He proved he had the faith, right? Because he took the action. He took him out there and he was actually going to do it. 
before God interceded. So, so what's the difference between belief and faith? faith belief is, is, is simple knowledge. Faith puts it into action. If, if we were going to drive it home a little more, our, our, our wheelbarrow guy was the perfect example. He, I'm sure he did believe that Blondin could walk across the rope with, uh, with the wheelbarrow because he'd just seen him do it. But he didn't have the faith to hop in and ride with him. You know, full disclosure, I, I wouldn't have gotten into the wheelbarrow either. <laughs> All right, question four. We made it to the end. James makes it clear that our faith is shown by our works. But how can our works increase our faith? So I, I like this question. Um, faith, how, how, do, how do our works grow our faith? Okay, so, so of course, guys, there's this interplay. And you know what? I don't know what your conversation has been like uh, on the other side of the camera. And maybe you've been talking about this for a while, but... Um, it's sticky. It's sticky. And we wind up wrestling around with this faith and works thing because they're intertwined. They're intertwined. It's our faith that saves us, not our works, right? It's, it's the fact that we trust God and that we have faith in, we have faith in him and we have faith that Christ's finished work is the reason why I'm going to get heaven. We have faith in that. And because we have that faith, we begin to want to work right? Because we're so grateful for what he's done for us. And our faith in him is the more, the more that grows, the more that, that we trust him, because trust and faith can be used interchangeably. The more we trust Jesus, the more we're like, man, I, I want to do good things too. I want to do things that'll please you. I want to do things that'll help other folks. So, so these things are intertwined. Right? And it's radically different if we're saying, I don't know you at all, but I'm going to do some work here because then you're going to owe me a paycheck. Right? So that's, that's, that's what we're struggling with when we're saying faith versus works. But can our works grow our faith? Yeah, of course, obviously. Um, you know, I, I think back, I, I think back about uh, as I've been led as I've been following Jesus, uh, what this has looked like for me. At many points, he's asked me to step out in faith, and it's been terrifying. Uh, little by little, though, it hasn't been so scary, because as I have done the work that he's placed in front of me, because, because look, guys, obviously, faith in Christ is going to lead to some service. It's not going to be just that you see people on the street who are hungry and you give them something. God does have a plan for you and he is intending some work for you. He did create you for a purpose and that is going to turn into some work for sure. So as he has revealed these kinds of things to me, um, uh, excuse me on that. That was a cat snafu. I'm just going to recognize it and keep going if you heard that little doing noise that went off a second ago. Anyway, as I've followed him, as I've trusted him, as I've had my faith in him, he's asked me to do works. And typically the works he's asked me to do have been very scary things. Preach sermons. I mean, that's that, that's scary, right? You know what? Doing what I'm doing right now, I know it at this point, I guess, seems kind of easy because I've gotten comfortable with it. But the first couple of times that you're facing that camera, yikes, man, that, that's scary. And, and I find that the further I go, the less fear I have, though, because I see that at each point he holds me up. And, and I recognize that if he hadn't have put me in places, if he hadn't have asked me to go and do a work, that I was afraid to do that because I didn't think I had it in me because I thought I was going to fail. Well, that wouldn't have required faith, but, but more importantly, it wouldn't have had the chance to build my faith because when I go and do a thing he asked me to do that I don't think I can do, and then he makes it possible, well then my faith grows. Hey guys, thanks for joining us this week. Um, full disclosure, you know, if this looks different, if I'm sounding different than I did a few seconds ago, I uh, actually shot all of the the uh, life group yesterday. And then when I went to edit it today, I realized, oh no, I didn't put a clothes on it. So I had to dig out my shirt again and <laughs> and uh, and put this piece on. Anyway, um, faith versus works. We, we, we can struggle with this one. Um, and you know what? Honestly, I think we probably should struggle with this. I think that part of the Christian walk 
is going to be balancing this um, for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. There, there's, there's, a, there's an interplay between faith and works and, and staying in the right lane is going to require connection with the Holy Spirit and it's going to require uh, connection with one another. Uh, otherwise, you're going to fall off one side or, or, or the other and, and neither is exactly right. Um, Anyway, I hope you hope you had a, a good discussion this week with your group, and uh, hope you enjoyed our our discussion uh, this week as well. And so, um, yeah, with, without further ado, let me pray for you, and then we'll close it up. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being with us this week, and we thank you for what you've taught us. And and Lord, we ask that you would keep making the truths of this. Um, known to us and that and that you would help us to to know you more and to love you more and to uh, to, to understand uh, you know the difference between faith and works in our daily lives father we uh, we ask all this in Jesus name amen